ESPN hates on Javante Davis and Devin Haney. What a surprise. Stay tuned. Well, wouldn't you know, ESPN hates on Javante and Devin Haney. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego. And I'm back with some more boxing. I need y'all to smash the like button. 2022, we here now. Uh, I want to talk about this concept. And it's just, at this point, it's not surprising. Let's get right into it. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you like the content. So, I'll highlight it. We'll do yellow. ESPN put out this article... And it says, after Javante Davis and Devin Haney failed to produce spectacular boxing results, what comes next? Now, I use my channel for the greater good to amp up the sport of boxing and to cover certain issues. But if this statement and this, I'm just now getting around to seeing it, and this particular headliner doesn't show and illustrate some of the double standards throughout boxing, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Why would it be framed? Why would ESPN take two black fighters who won both of their fights decidedly, who are both undefeated, who both have lightweight versions of belts, right? Devin Haney, WBC, and frame their article just like this, basically saying Javante and Haney failed to produce spectacular boxing results. And this type of pressure and this, this level of underwhelm, you seldom see for other fighters, right? And we'll get into what I'm talking about specifically. So we'll start with George Cambosos. He's getting a lot of praise as he should. He beat Teofimo and that was a great win for him. But George Cambosos is undefeated and he was coming off two uh, victories, these split decision victories, right? With Mick Bay and Lee Selby, right? Split decisions where he won, and some people even argued the other guy, Lee Selby and Mickey Bay, won. But these two back to back split decision victories, right? You don't see ESPN framing it like this like, oh, you're not producing spectacular boxing so we know what's at play i am on record stating this if cambosos ends up fighting a guy like lomachenko as opposed to so keep in mind i'm already on record stating the number two the two fights that i would me personally would prefer to see george cambosos fight next would be Javante davis because he's the money man and he's clearly the cash cow doing numbers and he's a great fighter. So Javante Davis or Devin Haney. But let ESPN tell it. They're saying that both Devin Haney and Javante Davis, the two guys that I'm telling you, I personally think would be great fights for George Cambosos. They're telling you something different. They're saying that, oh, they failed to produce spectacular boxing results. My question is this. How come for black fighters, this seems to be a talking point and if the performance there's no knockout or if there's no knockdown that's the standard that said black fighter is held to but then i just showed you george cambosos had back-to-back -back underwhelming performances that ended in split decisions where a lot of people really argue that george cambosos didn't win these two fights and everybody's praising george cambosos for just the teofimo fight and Teofimo really had a he I thought Teofimo fought lousy, to be honest. No, I'm not taking anything away from Cambosos. He did his thing, but Teofimo also came out like a madman. Versus Tank Davis, I thought Isak Pitbull Cruz, especially being a late replacement, he had a dangerous style and Tank hurt his hand, right? Isak Pitbull Cruz, the reason he lost is because Tank is superior and Tank is better. But he didn't lose because he fought like an idiot. 
like he was doing a lot of good things in there and it made for a compelling fight. And even though I could clearly see Tank was winning, I thought that Isak Cruz had a valiant effort and even in loss, his stock went way up. Now you look at Devin Haney's situation. Devin just fought Joseph Jojo Diaz and dominated him. And Joseph Jojo Diaz was coming off of his best recent win since Tevin Farmer versus a boogeyman of sorts, Javier Fortuna. But when Devin Haney got in there, he made him look very ill-prepared or average and hesitant and gun-shy. So that's a testament to whatever Devin Haney was doing in there right that had Jojo Diaz reconsidering things, right? But ESPN is framing it as if they had pathetic performances, right? We've also seen guys like Vasil Lomachenko, who I guarantee ESPN is probably pushing for him to fight Cambosos. We've seen Lomachenko put together performances where he fought Jose Pedraza, a guy that Tank Davis demolished and beat every second of the round and stopped. And I don't think Lomachenko looked that great versus Jose Pedraza. His face was marked up at the end of fights like Mario uh, Mariaga and even fights and performances like Luke Campbell. He got hurt in that fight. Richard Comey was underwhelming. But again, the point I'm making is if you go through ESPN, I guarantee you that is not the the framing that you'll see on Lomachenko's last fight. And to be honest, I didn't think Lomachenko's performance versus Richard Comey was anything in, inspired or, or crazy right and look at how they frame it Lomachenko did former number one Lomachenko move up after the win blah 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 Lomachenko knocks down Komei look at how it's framed and I just want you guys we're going to focus a lot on that on 2022 look at how it's framed and then on top of that you got the WBC who are calling Devin Haney basically the pride champion whatever that means and undermining it so you could see this the point is I did a video also about the Ring Magazine um, rankings and they have Devin Haney behind Tio Fimo who just lost and got battered. Why? Why is ESP this? This you cannot make this stuff make sense in the world of boxing. Why is it that black fighters in the sport of boxing they win in cases like Gervonta Davis, right? Cases like Gervonta Davis and Devin Haney. And win comfortably, and you see articles that are stating, "Oh, did they did they look good, or did they they didn't really impress us with the performances?" Not everything's going to be a knockdown barn burner, you know, knockout fight. And it's funny because you have a Cuban fighter and a African American fighter that fought last night in Luis King Kong Ortiz versus Charles Martin. And some people were saying he got old overnight and he was exposed because he got knocked down. So can you imagine if Devin Haney or Gervonta Davis got dropped twice before achieving victory? So you can clearly see for certain fighters, the bar is raised so, so crazy. Devin Haney didn't get dropped. He didn't get hurt and he won comfortably against Joseph Jojo Diaz. Same could be said. And in fact, instead of ESPN writing articles saying that, oh, neither one of them look good, let's let's spread that love. Tank Davis, actually, he looked real good because he impressed me that he can box and he doesn't need a knockout to win versus guys like Ruslan Provotnikov. If Ruslan Provotnikov doesn't knock you out and he's getting outboxed, then he'll probably lose. If you could take his power or stay away from his power and he can't hurt you, then that's the only gear that he has. Javante Davis showed me a whole different dynamic to his setup that he could get it done just by boxing while wounded against an aggressive guy like Pitbull Cruz. So it's like, we got to start keeping it real. Well, not me. I've been keeping it real. But in 2022, you guys should really question it. Why is the burden? Why are articles being written and headliners being written for winners who won comfortably and it's almost written and worded as if they lost versus guys like Lomachenko. He, he doesn't look great in certain fights and or loses to Teofimo, who wasn't supposed to beat him. Teofimo's face is bloody and he's losing to a guy coming off two split decision victories where he arguably lost in Cambosos. Cambosos beat him in his backyard as an underdog and 
and Cambosos, keep in mind, he got dropped. Why is this the narrative in, in the sport of boxing as if you have to get dropped and beat up in order to have look good in a fight? You know, and, and it's 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 unacceptable. And it's, it's really appalling that people are trying to spin this narrative that it has to be a drag out type of fight in order to look spectacular. Tank is not gonna be able to knock every single person out. In fact, before Isak Pitbull Cruz, there's one other guy that went the distance with him. It happens, some guys are tough, some guys are durable. Isak Pitbull Cruz hasn't been knocked out by anybody or knocked down to my knowledge. So with that being said, we gotta start establishing real guidelines for fruitful sport of boxing and that starts with more realistic expectations tank davis did exactly what he was supposed to do he was supposed to fight roley roley had to pull out for legal reasons he stepped up and fought the next you know rank contender who if you go to ring R ring magazines they're supposed to be the bible of boxing he's in the top six and people are hating on tank for fighting a top six guy it's just like you can't have your cake and eat it too. Tank fought with injury. He fought and achieved the, the victory. You know, at the end of the day, sometimes it's about getting the victory, getting the dub, and you can go back and look at tape and worry about things you could sharpen up later. He had an injury, nursing an injury. Same thing with Devin Haney. Why are we scrutinizing the people like Devin Haney and he's beat, he's winning his fights? Shouldn't the article be like, man, Jojo Diaz, he had this hell of an opportunity and Golden Boy was trying to stall out Devin Haney and then Eddie Hearn ponied up with the money and forced in my channel, forced a fight like Jojo Diaz and Jojo Diaz needs to go back to the drawing board. That's what should happen because especially in this country of America, Americans love winners. But only in the sport of boxing do you hear this poppycock where ESPN is writing articles almost as if the winners didn't win good enough. And then when you see fights like Triple G where he looked horrible versus Camille Sismeta or loses to Derevchenko, you do not see ESPN putting, oh, Triple G fails to stun or produce. Triple G is supposed to be a knockout artist and he's a silver medalist. But when Tank Davis don't get a knockout, these are the headliners. Tank Davis and Devin Haney failed to produce spectacular boxing results. I mean, what boxing results were you expecting? You thought he was going to drop? I mean, Jojo Diaz is a good fighter. He beat Tevin Farmer, who could box. Devin Haney had less problems with Jojo Diaz. I mean, you guys have to start analyzing what I'm saying. What results were you expecting? He won the fight. He won the fight clearly checkmate the future is now the hibernation fives by kanichi bear hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones out of the box you can connect to any console or pc bluetooth ready with a low latency usb adapter color rgb and extreme bass mode the hibernation fives adjust to you whether you need a gaming travel gym or lifestyle headphones the hibernations got you covered the new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster.